Hello, this is Mike Pintar, the Wisconsin Artist uh, YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm uh, putting together my impression of a local scene that I had here. And uh, following some of the theories that have been set by Charles Hawthorne, who was uh, the founder of the Cape Cod School of Art. The impression, uh, approach to impressionism is everybody's idea of uh, what they feel about painting, uh, how they see light and how they see color. I think this uh, approach uh, amplifies the color and allows the artist to push those color values in a way that's quite different than a representational type of painting. For my impression paintings, I start uh, with a blank white canvas. I never tone the canvas. And I'm using, uh, at this point, a triple rectified turpentine to uh, sketch out the major components and then start to put in what I'll call uh, the first notes uh, throughout the app, throughout the painting. Um, so I've got uh, some cad orange. I've got some cad uh, yellow. Uh, for the most part, there's almost pure color at this point. Uh, very little white has been used uh, with the colors. Still using the brush because I want the paint to dry fast, and that's achievable when using a high quality turpentine. We're about to get to a point where it'll be nothing but knife the rest of the way. And uh, I'll start again with my first notes in the shade plane area and uh, putting in masses of color and keeping the masses fairly large at this point. I won't go for the uh, breakdown of those areas until a little bit later. So that's kind of the setup on this. Uh, first notes, second notes, and third notes will be coming up here. And uh, a lot of palette knife, a lot of use of scumbling, and uh, the light touch is very uh, crucial in this type of painting done a la prima, all in one session. And this is... Uh, uh, what this particular video is about so hope you enjoy it I've got a couple other commentary areas and uh, feel free to shoot me any questions and thanks at this point in the painting now uh, the rest of the way I'll be using a palette knife uh, again wet into wet with a knife can lead to disasters in uh, ending up with piles of very grayed down and muddied uh, applications. So it, it's crucial to have a very light touch and uh, work on the effects of scumbling wet into wet. So the, the key here for the first notes, if you will, the first color notes that I'm laying down is to think primarily about temperature. And my distant trees uh, where the shadows were the deepest I'm working with some alizarin crimson, uh, a little bit of blue. I, I think after the fact, the blue might have been a little bit too cool because while the local colors red green, uh, they were in the shadows, which to me reads as a cool green. So my underpainting or first notes are going to be with a cool color. In this case, uh, reds leaning towards the cool side along with a couple purples and a few blues mixed in there to help with separating and defining those big masses. So I'm working my way around uh, the painting, still focusing on uh, these first notes and setting up uh, the impression of temperature and color temperature. This area that I'm working in now had the brightest sunlight hitting it and in many cases uh, I've laid down some cad yellow Cad orange, uh, not going with the <clears throat> excuse me the uh, the warmest warms, uh, but uh, that's the area there where I'm setting up the lightest light coming in. Uh, for the water, uh, while water the water was very greenish, kind of muddyish color, um, I like to lay in the water with a warm uh, first note. In this case, is permanent rose. Uh, with some cad red and then some alizarin crimson 
very limited to the amount of white that I was using on the water. This stage of the painting, these are some foreground grasses. I was approximately 10 to 15 feet away from the water, and uh, the grasses were facing me in the shadow. So I kind of laid that in with some uh, alizarin crimson, uh, fairly warm, uh, but the shadows were facing me, so I read those a little bit cooler than if the sun was right on top of them. And in that case, I would probably use an orange or a yellow ochre or something in that flavor. I'm about to begin the uh, what I'll call the third notes or the application of local color. A couple of things about the sequence of events. So the first notes are a uh, mass uh, block in of temperature and brightness. Not necessarily looking at the local color, but scanning the scene and then laying down what you consider the warmest color on your palette along with some of the cooler colors on your palette. So looking at temperature and light and just putting in that first set of color notes. The second layer or the second uh, application, second notes, are looking at the shade planes or the shade values and starting to help define those big areas and putting in what you would consider slightly cooler uh, areas, those being the second notes. So as I begin the uh, final third note application here, this is where we're looking at local color. And again, uh, in many cases, I did not put the exact color down. This is an impression of this scene. It is not a representational painting. But I'm starting to be uh, more cognizant of what the local color is. And uh, also, very light touch with the knife. We do not want to, uh, I didn't want to blend the color. <clears throat> I want those first and second notes to show through uh, once the painting is complete and you'll see that as I work towards the finish line here. So it gives you an idea of uh, how I'm working and progressing through the painting and uh, this piece here, the, the, the final notes, probably took at least half of the painting time, 45 minutes or so, to get through this. Uh, using more white at this point and also looking at the variations of grays that can be mixed using complements. So uh, that's where I'm at moving towards the final sequence here. I don't want to talk through the whole video, but I want to give you some ideas on how I approach this particular painting. And uh, I'll be quiet for a few minutes here. Uh, and I hope you, you enjoy it. I'll catch up with you right before I'm done.
one of the most critical pieces now is to know when to stop and I'm happy with the way the color is reading and the way the light is reading and using the knife to just make a couple minor details uh, add some details make a couple of adjustments you'll notice that a lot of the paint is not blended together I'm still laying in uh, masses of color and uh, trying not to get things too muddy so here's the final piece and uh, I'm fairly happy with the way this turned out the colors uh, I guess more importantly the light for me read correctly coming in strong from the right side my warmest colors are reading that way and some cast shadows coming in over uh, to the left side of the painting I think the water still reads as water and uh, yeah it was fun uh, a lot of palette knife and you gotta know when to stop for me this is it thanks for watching everybody